double integrals in polar coordinates. So we went over the proof, the definition. Now we are ready to go over some examples. Remember that if you have a double integral with a continuous function f and the region or the base is a sector or part of a circular shape, for example, in this case, you can see that your theta is bounded between alpha and beta, or in general, between theta 1 and theta 2, and your r is bounded between two functions, like r sub 1 theta and r sub 2 theta, well, you can convert your double integral in x and y into polar form. So wherever you see x, you're going to use r cosine theta, and wherever you see y, you're going to use r sine theta, and dA converts into r dr d theta. The inner integral is with respect to r, and the outer integral is with respect to theta. Very good. Take a look at this question. Evaluate the double integral of 3x plus 4y squared dA, where r is the region in the upper half plane. It's bounded by two circles, unit circle and the circle of radius 2. Let's visualize this a little bit here. If you think about these two unit circles in x, y plane, x squared plus y squared equals to 1 is this a smaller circle, and x squared plus y squared equals to 4 is this larger circle. And 3x plus 4y squared is basically this surface. So we want to calculate the double integral of z over this region, which is the area bounded between these two circles and above x-axis. This is our goal. So we need to analyze this a little bit before moving on and doing the calculation, basically. So take a look at the region again. This is the region bounded between these two circles. R in x, y can be written as all x and y are points such that y is positive, y, y is positive, because you have upper half plane, so that's how you end up with y to be positive. And then x squared plus y squared is bounded between 1 and 4. In polar form, we can use x equals to r cosine theta, y equals to r sine theta. When you do the substitution, we get r squared cosine squared plus r squared sine squared, which we all know it's equal to r squared. So instead of x squared plus y squared, you're going to just use r squared. r squared is bounded between 1 and 4. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to take the square root of all sides. You have the square root of 1, square root of r squared, and square root of 4. So it means that your r or the radius is bounded between two fixed values, 1 and 2. So, so far we found the boundaries for r. What about theta? If we look at this region in two dimension, which is basically this region that you can see here in 3D visualization, and then... In 2D visualization, you have upper half of the plane because y is positive, the green shaded region, and theta is bounded between 0 and pi. Remember that for theta, you start from the positive part of x-axis and it stops here. It doesn't go further. The object is moving in this area. Very good. So now let us convert our integral from x and y into r and theta. 
wherever you see x, you're going to use r cosine theta. So you have 3 r cosine theta plus wherever you see y, you're going to use r sine theta. So you have 4 r squared sine squared theta. Now remember that for dA, you have r dr d theta. And your r is bounded between 1 and 2. This is your inner integral. And then your outer integral is with respect to theta, which is bounded between 0 and pi. So again, it's a common mistake for students that they forget to write dA as r dr d theta. If you make this mistake, then your integral is not going to be correct. Now we are going back to pre-calculus, elementary calculus, to do the computation. This is 3r squared cosine theta plus 4r cubed sine squared theta. Why? Because you can basically distribute r into parentheses. R is distributed in the first parenthesis, in the second parenthesis. That's how you end up with 3r squared cosine theta plus 4r cubed sine squared theta. Then dr d theta, you're taking the integral with respect to r, then with respect to theta. Well, since you're taking the integral with respect to r, it is basically taking the integral of u to the n du, which is u to n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c, but remember that here you have a definite integral. So basically you can get rid of the constant of integration. This becomes r cubed. Remember that the integral of 3r squared is r cubed. And then you multiply it by cosine theta plus the integral of 4r cubed is r to the fourth and you multiply that by sine squared theta and r is bounded between one and two then you take the integral with respect to theta now substitute two into r and then substitute one into r to simplify this it becomes seven cosine theta plus 15 sine squared theta then taking the integral with respect to theta. So as you can see, you have eight cosine theta minus cosine theta, and then you have 16 sine squared theta minus sine squared theta, which is 15 sine squared. Remember that sine squared theta is a half 1 minus cosine 2 theta. This is what we know from pre-calculus. Since taking the integral of sine squared requires us to write it as a half 1 minus cosine 2 theta, we're going to do the same thing. This is 7 cosine theta plus 15 divided by 2, 1 minus cosine 2 theta d theta, and theta ranges between 0 to pi. Now, remember that the integral of cosine ax dx is, a, is 1 over a sine ax. We're going to apply it just right here when you are taking the integral. This is equal to 7 sine theta plus 15 theta divided by 2 minus 15 over 4 sine 2 theta and theta ranges between 0 to pi. Just a quick note for you, the integral of d theta is theta. So for those of you who are wondering where did this theta come from, this is the integral of 1 d theta, which becomes theta. This is equal to 15 pi divided by 2. So this is your final answer. And here you have equality.